Hi, I'm Michael Benaroya, uh, the founder of Benaroya Publishing. Uh, my history in working uh, before Benaroya Publishing started it, I had a uh, company called Benaroya Pictures. Uh, we produce and invest in uh, feature films, and uh, so far we've produced six films uh, to date in the last four years. The films that we've produced so far have been New York, I Love You, The Romantics, Margin Call, Catch 44, The Wettest County, and The Words. Uh, so far, two of our films have premiered in Sundance. We got a film premiere in Toronto and Berlin film festivals. My goal in starting Benaroya Publishing was to produce really high quality uh, comics. I, I wanted to produce comics that were a little more carefully detailed and had really focused on having great stories. Um, I also wanted to work with really top level artists and uh, really produce a higher quality comic than everyone else is producing, even if it, if even if we did so at a, you know less of a profit, we wanted to you know really focus on creating a high level product, even if it costs a little bit more. And our our belief is that the longevity of the comic series that we'll be creating will uh, make that make sense in the long run. Our editor-in-chief, Dave Elliott, uh, has been doing a great job. The reason that uh, I brought him in is he's got a great deal of experience uh, in the industry. He's been working for, gosh, 20 years, and I've always been a big fan of uh, the comics that he's worked on. And uh, so when I had the opportunity to bring him in, uh, you know, I jumped at the chance. I think what sets Benaroya Publishing apart from the other publishers uh, is, again, the, the really the focus on the details and the... Uh, the way that we develop story, we have a you know a really l large and diverse development team, and we uh, you know we don't just settle for story that gets us from A to B. We will really want to you know enjoy the arc that the characters are taking and have it you know have twists and turns that are unexpected. Uh, we believe that setting up comic series, especially in the early stages, you really have to make the audience relate to the characters and get them invested. And uh, that's what we're trying to do with all of our comic series. And, uh, you know, while the stories that we're telling, you know, can stand alone in the, er, in the first set of comics, you know, we have more stories for all of these worlds. And we believe that, you know, if the fans request them and the fans buy the comic and want more, you know, we're ready with more. The concepts for uh, Red Spike, Samurai's Blood, and Marksman. Uh, Red Spike uh, actually came uh, from one of our development meetings at the company, and uh, we, that particular week, were just doing comic or superhero ideas, and uh, the, the idea came from uh, we were we wanted to find a grounded superhero. Uh, I don't like superheroes like say Superman, who has these kind of enormous powers that are sort of you know, it's sort of arbitrary, it feels like, what he can and can't do. Um, and so we were trying to create something that seemed real, that the audience didn't have to make an associative leap with. And, uh, you know, we thought that regular guys, uh, you know, pe people can do amazing things with adrenaline and you hear crazy stories about mothers picking up cars when their baby's under it and stuff like that. And so, you know, I figured if, they, if a mom can do that, well, a uh, special forces guy could uh, really do some cool stuff if he were uh, to have uh, that much adrenaline. And so we thought it was a really realistic superhero. In terms of the marksman, um, the idea started as a character. And the character of the marksman was a guy who literally never missed a shot. And so, you know, from any distance or from any angle or uh, any situation, he could, you know, hit a dime on the ground a hundred yards away. Um, and uh, that was where the character came from. And then we sort of developed the world around him. Uh, the way that, the reason that we developed the world the way it was, well, A, we thought it was a cool landscape, but also we wanted to come up with a world where one man, one guy in an army can really turn the tide of an entire civilization's, you know, safety or success. And uh, we figured we needed to create a world where there weren't very many soldiers. And so that meant 
there had to be less people. And uh, so, you know, from there we kind of developed the scenario that, uh, that we have in the Marksman. Samurai's Blood, um, that one I, I can honestly say I came up with in the middle of the night at like four in the morning. And uh, I, what I was thinking about were the themes of honor and the themes of, you know, the themes of vengeance really and, and family pride. And so I thought, you know, what would it mean to have your entire family name stripped away from you? And how would you go about bringing back the honor to your family? And I, and I thought, you know, back in the era that Samurai's Blood takes place in, in the 1400s in Japan, there was a lot of consideration and care about your family name. And I thought, if that were stripped away from you, you'd really be nothing. And I thought this was the this was the setting in which you could have the most dramatic uh, arc for the characters to go from being the, you know, sort of local lords to uh, being nobody and then gaining it all back.